Okay, so here we are, 7.1, atoms and parts of atoms, okay? So here we see a picture of what an atom might look like, right? We have the nucleus, this is a very large, very massive atom. Uh, we have the nucleus, and then we have the electrons going around the nucleus, right? Kind of an interesting picture of atoms. So first of all, elements. This is kind of a review um, term and definition, but elements are matter that's made up of one kind of this, one kind of atom, all right? Um, elements are abbreviated by using one or two letters on the periodic table. Some of them don't, some of the abbreviations, some of the symbols for elements don't make sense yet, but that's okay. Um, examples of this would be Al for aluminum, He for helium, or Au for gold, which is weird. But uh, whenever we have a weird name for an element, it ha it's usually because it is from the Latin term for that element. Like gold was called aurum in early Do you know why gold's really called Au? No, why is gold really called Au? Because if someone steals your gold watch, you yell at them, hey, you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It, okay. It comes from the, it comes from the Latin word, aurum, right? Which is, which is Latin. It means gold, right? So that's where we get some of the names, uh, some of the uh, symbols. And I'll make sure that that's a, as, as little confusing as possible. Okay. All right. So it's worth knowing that atoms are the smallest parts of an element, the smallest parts of a kind of matter that have the same properties. So if I have an element gold and I chop it into smaller and smaller and smaller parts, eventually the smallest part of that is going to be an atom with 79 protons. We'll get into that in a minute. But um, the smallest part of a kind of matter that has the same properties is an atom. Okay, let me get rid of this because, um, yeah, this would actually be so if these are protons, this would be uh, lithium. Right? This is a lithium atom. Um, I can tell because it has three protons. But atoms are the smallest part of a kind of matter that has the same properties. Right now, atoms are made of still smaller parts. This is the um, th this is contrary to what we've been told. You know, we're told that atoms are the smallest part of matter, but no, atoms are just the smallest part of matter that has the same properties. The smallest part of gold. But atoms themselves are made up of particles. Okay, there are three kinds of particle that we will talk about um, you know, later in, in higher science. We'll actually learn that these particles are made of yet smaller particles. We're not getting into muons and leptons right now. But atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay? Protons are the part of an atom that has a positive charge. Neutrons are the part of an atom that has no charge or zero charge, neutral charge. Okay. Um, when we start to do 7.1, activity number two, part two, this will make a little more sense. And then electrons are the part of an atom with a negative or minus charge. Okay. The symbol for an electron is an E or a minus. The symbol for a neutron is an N or a zero. I prefer N. For a proton, it is a P or a plus sign. We will use these symbols later on when we are drawing diagrams of atoms. We'll talk about that later. Now, this kind of just goes back to element, but the identity of an atom, in other words, what kind of element it is, depends on how many protons it has, okay? Any atom with the same number of protons is an atom of the same element. So if I look at an atom like this one, where it has one, two, three protons, that is an atom of lithium, 
if it has four protons, it's not lithium anymore. It's something else. We're not getting into that. But if it has six protons, it's carbon. If it has seven protons, it's nitrogen. And so on. We'll see that more when we do the um, lab activity. Our next, our part two, 7.1 part two. But um, depending on how many protons it has, that's what element it is an atom of. Okay, so it's the kind of atom. Okay, carbon has six, oxygen always has eight, right? If I had a carbon that had an extra proton, it wouldn't be carbon anymore, it would be nitrogen. If it had eight protons, it would be oxygen. If it had nine, it would be, um, I literally have a periodic table on my back and I'd have to look at that. After oxygen, it is fluorine, sorry, fluorine. So um, the protons tell us what kind of atom it is. Now, the protons and the neutrons are in the middle part of an atom. They're in the center. Okay. And they are many times, many, many times heavier than electrons. And so we kind of consider that they are the part that makes the mass of the atom. So if you have a chunk of lead, the reason why that lead is so dense, why it feels so heavy to you, is because there are lots of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of lead atoms, okay? The mass of things, the mass of anything, is really it's determined by the number of protons and neutrons that are in that container of things, okay? In this case, the mass of one single atom of lithium is the sum of the mass of three protons and four neutrons, okay? A proton is 18,000 times heavier than an electron. So the nucleus makes up the mass of an atom, except for a tiny, tiny bit. For our purposes, electrons are, have no mass. Okay, we will, for this class, we will pretend that electrons have zero mass. The electrons travel on the outside of the atom. They're not in the nucleus. Okay, they travel around the outside in what we call an electron shell. Now, electron shells are more part of our, our way of imagining uh, electrons moving. In reality, they move in what are called clouds or orbitals. But for high school science, for a physical science course, they move in shells. And this is how we will imagine that they travel. The size of the shell the size of the cloud even, if we looked at it that way, the size of that determines the size of an atom. So some atoms are actually larger than others. Okay, we'll get into this more um, actually in the next few slides, but the space that the electrons travel in is the size of the atom. When atoms collide with each other, and they do according to our kinetic theory of matter, when atoms bump into each other, their nucleus doesn't actually hit each other, okay? It is their electron shells that collide. So when atoms interact with other atoms, they're interacting with their outer shells, their electron shells. When we draw an atom, and actually what you see here, this is in motion, this is a Bohr model of an atom. A Bohr model is, it's a, a model or a picture or a diagram of an atom that shows the nucleus and it shows the electron shells. In a Bohr model, we usually draw the same number of electrons as we have protons. So when we draw a Bohr model, we draw the pluses equal the minuses. Okay, the positive charged particles equal the negative charged particles. Now, for neutrons, that will kind of depend, and we'll learn more about that um, as we move on through this unit. But the pluses and the minuses are equal in a Bohr model. Most of the time, the pluses, the minuses, and the neutrons are more or less equal. When in doubt, that's usually the case.
uh, here in the slide that asked you guys to build this Bohr model of helium. I know it's helium because there are two protons. Doesn't matter how many neutrons or electrons. If it has two protons, it's helium. Okay. Earlier, when I said that electrons travel in shells around the nucleus, okay, well, only so many electrons will fit on a shell, okay? We can look here. The first period elements are hydrogen and helium. They have one shell, okay? Once it gets two electrons, this shell literally can't hold any more. It, it can't hold any more. There's no room. Um, this actually has to do with the fact that you can only get negative particles to sit so close to each other. Um, and there, there's a lot more going on there, but the first shell holds two. The next shell, if you look, it's got one. This has two. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The second shell holds eight. There's a scheme to this. Okay. Different layers of electron shells can hold different numbers of electrons. Okay. For our class, it's enough to know that it's like this. The first shell only holds two. And after that, the shells can hold up to eight a piece. This is going to make more sense later. Guarantee it. Here it is again. I wanted to make sure you guys got to look at this. This right here is a cheat sheet for later. Okay. When I ask you guys to draw Bohr models later, you will be able to use this as a cheat sheet for the electron part of drawing that. And here are the questions we have. These are the self-check questions. We'll go down and we'll look at this and the questions I asked you guys, what is an atom? Well, that was like the second slide or the third slide, right? An atom is the smallest part of a kind of matter with the same properties. What are the parts of an atom? Well, we've got protons, which have a positive charge and mass. We have neutrons that have no charge, but they do have mass. We have electrons that have a negative charge and basically no mass. Symbol for a proton. It's a plus sign or a P, right? Because it's got a positive charge. The identity of an atom depends on the protons, the number of protons it has. Electrons have a negative charge. The nucleus of an atom, the nucleus is made up of the middle part, the protons and the neutrons. The size of an atom depends on the electron shells, okay? The more electrons it has, the more shells it needs, so it's larger. Sodium is larger than lithium. It has more electron shells because you can only fit so many electrons on each shell. So lithium and beryllium, those atoms are about the same size, right? Because they only need two electron shells. But sodium is quite a bit bigger. A Bohr model is just, it's just the model that we draw of an atom. This is a Bohr model of carbon. This is the Bohr model of helium. We can see that there are sort of different styles of Bohr models. This one draws each proton and neutron. This one just kind of lists them, right? Um, I did want you guys to actually take a pencil and a piece of paper. I want you guys to draw the Bohr model here of lithium. Draw this in your notes. We are going to be doing this on the test. I'm not sure how I'm going to test you guys on this, but you do need to be able to create a Bohr model of different elements like carbon and sodium, things like that. How many electrons fit in shell two? Well, here we go. It can fit up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's exactly what the slides tell us, right? Holds up to eight electrons. That is it for our parts of Adam's notes. Um, it is probably worth reviewing this lecture um, 
I'll be posting the video. It's worth reviewing this lecture. It's worth reviewing these slides because this is the foundational understanding of everything that will take place in chemistry after this. The whole class depends on us understanding every bit of this lecture.